Welcome to the Apple Daily News. This podcast is created by Generative AI. Today is July 4th, 2024, and we have a lot to cover, from Apple's compliance with Russian regulations to exciting developments in accessibility and AI. Links to all stories can be found in the episode notes. Apple has complied with a request from Russia's media regulator Roskomnadzor to remove several VPN services from the Russian App Store. This decision affects popular VPN services like Proton VPN, Red Shield VPN, NordVPN, and LaVPN. While existing users can still use the apps, they will not be able to update them or download them again. The move comes amidst increased online censorship in Russia following the invasion of Ukraine, which has led to the blocking of various media outlets and social media platforms. The Russian government has imposed strict regulations on VPNs, making it challenging for users to access blocked content. Apple, despite suspending product sales in Russia earlier, has continued to comply with Russian regulations and has deleted multiple apps from the Russian App Store. This includes the removal of an app developed by the late Russian opposition politician Alexei Navalny's team, aimed at helping voters make informed decisions during elections. The removal of VPN services from the Russian App Store is seen as Apple bowing to Kremlin pressure, as the Russian government cracks down on tools that allow users to bypass online restrictions. This move highlights the challenges faced by tech companies operating in countries with stringent censorship laws. On July 4th, the VPN service provider LeVPN was removed from the Russian App Store by Apple following a demand from Roskomnadzor the Russian federal executive body for media and telecommunications. The reason for the removal was cited as non-compliance with local legal requirements, specifically related to content deemed illegal in Russia. This action was taken in accordance with a specific law governing information and technology in Russia. LeVPN has confirmed the removal and has appealed the decision while collaborating with human rights activists and other VPN providers to understand the broader implications. This incident highlights the increasing influence of Roskomnadzor over major tech companies like Apple and could lead to further actions against other applications and services in Russia. The outcome of this situation could impact how global tech companies operate in jurisdictions with strict regulatory environments. The Apple Vision Pro, AVP, is a new headset designed to assist disabled users in various ways. Maxine Collard, a PhD MD neuroscience student with low visual acuity, found the AVP to be life-changing due to its ability to magnify the entire screen clearly. The AVP offers features like single eye tracking and voice control, making it accessible for users with different disabilities. Users like Steve Colson, who has hearing loss, and Michael Doyce, who is blind, have found the AVP to be transformative in their daily lives. Despite some initial challenges with calibration and usability, many users appreciate the AVP's potential to enhance accessibility and provide a more immersive experience. Apple has shown a commitment to inclusivity and accessibility, with employees actively involved in designing features for disabled users. While the AVP is still a first-generation product with some bugs, it has the potential to significantly improve the lives of disabled individuals by providing them with equal access to technology and enhancing their overall experience. Apple has started removing VPN services from the Russian version of the App Store at the request of Russia's Federal Service for Supervision of Communications. The VPN services removed include Proton VPN, Red Shield VPN, NordVPN, and LeVPN. Roskomnadzor claimed that these apps contained illegal content in Russia. Apple advised developers to contact Roskomnadzor to clarify the reasons for removal. The blocking of VPN services in Russia has increased in frequency, especially since the conflict in Ukraine began. Roskomnadzor has previously blocked numerous VPN services and applications in the country. Additionally, Russia's censorship authority plans to use artificial intelligence to maintain a register of prohibited information. Telecom operators in Russia currently block around 300,000 unregistered SIM cards per week at the request of Roskomnadzor. Apple has released a white paper titled Longevity by Design, addressing concerns about the longevity of its products, particularly Macs and iPhones. The paper highlights Apple's efforts to improve the durability of iPhones, such as incorporating liquid ingress protection. However, 
there are still concerns about macOS support, with a policy of one plus two years for updates. Apple emphasizes its commitment to providing critical security updates, even after a product can no longer be updated with the newest OS. The company has also made strides in repairability, doubling the size of its service and repair network. Apple clarifies its policy on third-party repairs and parts, stating that warranties are not impacted unless the product is damaged during the repair. The paper also introduces new features for iPhones, such as a parts and service history section, an activation lock for individual parts. Overall, the white paper aims to assure customers that Apple prioritizes product longevity and denies the concept of built-in obsolescence. Apple has entered into a partnership with OpenAI, which includes Apple receiving a new board observer role at OpenAI. Phil Schiller, Apple's head of App Store development and former marketing chief, has been chosen for this role. Schiller will be able to attend OpenAI board meetings, but will not have voting rights. The partnership does not involve financial transactions, and Apple aims to offer OpenAI's ChatGPT integration to its users, potentially generating revenue through App Store fees. Microsoft also has an observer role at OpenAI, which could lead to tensions between Microsoft and Apple. Apple is looking to expand its AI features internationally and is exploring partnerships with Google, AI startup Anthropic, and Chinese companies like Alibaba and Baidu. The international rollout of Apple's AI features will take time due to compliance with local laws and regulations. Apple's latest AI features will initially be available only in US English. Flaws in open source software, specifically in a project called CocoaPods, used for iOS apps, were discovered, potentially exposing almost every Apple device to hacking. The vulnerabilities allowed hackers to introduce malicious code into apps that rely on CocoaPods. One critical flaw, CVE 2024-38366, enabled hackers to take over unclaimed software packages without verification leading to downstream infections. The vulnerabilities were patched after being reported, but it's unclear if they were exploited. This incident highlights the risks of open source software and the need for increased security efforts. Google and the White House are advocating for better security in open source projects, and EVA Information Security recommends increased oversight of tools like CocoaPods to prevent supply chain attacks. Apple is planning to release four iPhone 16 models this year, all equipped with the same A-series chip, according to a leak discovered in Apple's backend. The code reveals new model numbers not associated with existing iPhones, following Apple's flagship device numbering scheme. The identifiers for the iPhone 16 models all start with the same number, indicating the use of the same chip for all four models. This aligns with previous rumors and leaks suggesting a shared chip for the iPhone 16 lineup. While differentiation between standard and pro models is possible, all devices are expected to feature the A18 chip to support upcoming Apple intelligence features in iOS 18. Additionally, a potential fifth model number could be linked to a future iPhone SE. Apple is planning to use a more advanced SOIC packaging technology for its upcoming M5 chips, which will be used to power future Macs and AI servers. The SOIC technology allows for the stacking of chips in a three-dimensional structure, providing better electrical performance and thermal management. Apple is working with TSMC on a next-generation hybrid SOIC package that combines thermoplastic carbon fiber composite molding technology. The M5 chips are expected to be mass-produced in 2025 and 2026 for new Macs and AI cloud servers. Apple's M5 chip is part of its strategy to vertically integrate its supply chain for AI functionality across computers, cloud servers, and software. The M5 chip is designed to enhance the performance of data centers and future AI tools that rely on the cloud. Apple's AI cloud servers are currently believed to be running on multiple connected M2 Ultra chips but the M5 chip is expected to be a significant upgrade. Designer Joni Ive shared insights into his collaboration with Apple co-founder Steve Jobs, describing it as the most joyful and extraordinary 15 years of his life. Ive, responsible for iconic designs like the iPhone and iPad, joined Apple in 1992 and formed a close bond with Jobs when they first met in 1997. Their partnership involved daily lunches and afternoons spent in the design studio. 
I've praised Jobs for his curiosity, innovative approach, and commitment to simplicity and quality in product design. After Jobs' passing in 2011, I've continued to reflect on their friendship and collaboration, eventually leaving Apple in 2019 to start his own design firm, Love From, inspired by Jobs' legacy. I've expressed deep gratitude for their time together and the lessons learned from Jobs. That's all for today's episode of the Apple Daily News. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to check the episode notes for links to all the stories we covered. Stay informed and see you next time.